Hello and greetings. Uh, let's look at our second example from week four as we continue to work through chapter two, uh, specifically section 2.2 on applications of linear programming. Um, so in this uh, problem, we'll have, um, I believe you'd call it an urban renewal problem. Uh, and we're going to try and tell the city council um, how to optimize their building plans to maximize revenues generated from tax dollars. Okay, so um, let's give it a whirl. So the city of Earthsville is faced with a severe budget shortage. Seeking a long-term solution, the city council votes to improve the tax base by condemning an inner city housing area and replacing it with a modern development. The project involves two phases. One, demolishing substandard houses to provide land for the new development. And two, building the new development. The following is a summary of the situation. As many as 300 substandard houses can be demolished. Each house occupies a 0.25 acre lot. The cost of demolishing a condemned house is $2,000. Lot sizes for new single, double, triple, and quadruple family uh, homes or units um, are 0 0.18, 0 0.28, 0 0.4, and 0.5 acre respectively. Street open space and utility easement account for 15% of available acreage. Uh, so 15% of our available space will go towards uh, streets, open spaces, and utility easements. In the new development, the triple and quadruple units account for at least 25% of the total. Single units must be at least 20% of all units, and double units at least 10%. Uh, tax levied per uh, unit uh, are as follows, and the construction costs per unit um, are as followed. And we're told that we can borrow up to $15 million from the local bank. And then we're asked with, or asked how many units of each type should be constructed to maximize tax collection. All right, so in this screencast, we'll set up the linear programming model. So we'll formulate um, our mathematical expressions, and then we'll have a follow-up video in which we uh, solve using Excel. Okay. So key is going to be to take this piece by piece. Okay. And so in terms of thinking about my objective function, so in the last sentence, we're told how many units of each type should be constructed to maximize tax collection. Okay, so um, I know my objective function then is going to be to maximize uh, revenue generation from taxes. And so when I introduce my variables then, um, let's see, we had single, double, triple, and quadruple units. Okay, so uh, let's first start by defining our variables. Okay, and so I'm going to introduce x1 x2, x3, and x4 uh, will be uh, the number, if I can spell correctly, ah, <laughs> will be the number of single, triple, single, double, triple, and quadruple family homes. Okay, so it'll be the number of each type of house constructed. Okay, and then in order to make room for those houses, we will need to demolish um, existing homes. So I'll let X5 be um, the number of demolished homes. Okay, so our variables that we're going to solve for uh, will be the number of each type of home that we're going to build, and then also the number of homes that we need to demolish. In terms of my goal or objective, okay. In that last sentence, we're asked how many units of each type should be constructed to maximize tax collection. Okay, so let's let Z be tax collected in dollars. Okay, 
So then the tax collected in dollars will just sum over um, each housing type times um, the tax levied per unit. All right, so bullet four, the tax levied per unit for each type uh, is given where we just defined x1, x2, x3, and x3 and x4 to be the number of units of each time each type constructed. Okay. So if this is tax collected in dollars, okay, so it'll be um, taxes levied per single occupancy uh, is $1,000 times x1 plus tax levied per double family housing is 1900 Triple family housing is 2700 And then $3,400 for quadruple family housing. All right, so the tax levied increases as the number of families living in a unit increases. Okay, so that's good. Um, and so, again, our goal is, is going to be to, to maximize that. Okay, so we're going to maximize the tax generated um, via tax collection. And now we just need to go through our problem step by step and look at what constraints we have to work with. Okay, so first we're told as many as 300 substandard houses can be demolished, where each house occupies a 0.25 acre lot. And we're told the cost of demolishing a condemned house is $2,000. Okay, so the first one will be, okay, so in terms of, you know, I'll call this constraint one. Okay, constraint one, okay, will be um, at most 3,000 houses can be, 3,000 houses can be, yeah, 3,000 houses can be demolished, right? So X5 is going to have to be less than or equal to 3,000. Where x5 is our variable quarter is going to be less than or equal to 300. So x5 is number of houses demolished is constraint one. Okay. Then the other piece of information we're going to pull from this is each house occupies um, 0.25 acres. Okay. So well, this first thing is is a constraint. Okay. From that, what I want to calculate is um, essentially the available acreage. So by demolishing the houses, how much space can I create to work with? Okay. And so we're told that each house that I demolish occupies 0.25 acres. Okay, and that'll be times the X5 houses demolished. And then if I wanted to, you could just as well, you know, calculate the cost to clear. Okay, so the cost to clear that acreage is um, the cost to demolish a house is two thousand dollars. Okay, so it'll be two thousand times x five. Okay, so we're not putting these in constraints quite yet. Uh, I'm just trying to gather information from each statement so that I can build them into constraints as I keep reading through the bullets. Okay. So then in two, we're told the lot sizes for new single, double, triple, and quadruple family homes are uh, as follows. And we're told that streets, open space, and utility easements account for 15% of the available acreage. Okay, so um, streets, open spaces, and utilities will account for 15% of our available space. Okay. All right, so what is our available space? Our available space, or available acreage, is this 0.25 times um, x5. Okay, so with that now, okay, we can work on constraint two. Okay. Okay, and so constraint two is going to be our available acreage, which is 0.25 times x5. Okay, 0.25 being the um, acres per demolished house. Okay, so that's going to be our total space available. Okay, that needs to be greater than or equal to the amount of space that we need for a construction project. How much space do we need? Well, we're going to need the space occupied per unit type times the number of units of each type. 
So we'll start with 0 0.18 times x1, okay, space per single family unit. Double family units are 0 0.28, 0 0.28x2, 0 0.28x3, 0 0.28x4, okay, triple is 0 0.4, and quadruple is 0 0.5, okay? And then the last piece of it is that 15%, 15% of our available acreage needs to go towards streets, open space, and utility easement. Okay, so 15% of our available acreage is gonna go for that Okay, so our available acreage is 0 0.25 times x5. Okay, so we're going to need to add on the 0 0.15 times 0 0.25 x5. Okay, so 0 0.25 times x5 is our available acreage. And so 15% of that's going to go for um, streets, utilities, and open spaces. All right, so I could just as well subtract this, you know, from the left-hand side. And, you know, 85% of that land that I cleared is available for use, right? Either way I write it, it'd be exactly uh, the same. Okay, so that's constraint two, that the space that I use to put houses, so of all the space I clear, here's the space needed to build um, those units, and then there's a the space needed for uh, streets, open spaces, and utilities. Okay, that's good. Um, and then next we have our constraints on uh, the triple and quadruple units account for at least 25% of the total. Okay, so our total is just going to be the total number of houses, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. Okay, so triple and quadruple. Okay, so constraint 3. Okay, number of triple and quadruple, okay, number of triple and quadruple houses, was it at least, was at least 25% of the total. So that's going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.25, then the total was x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. Okay, let's work on our next one. So then constraint 4, Constraint four is single units must be at least 20% of the total, and double is going to be 10%. Okay, boy, I've, I'm really off today, short term memory. So 20%, single is 20%. Okay, so single x1 is going to be greater than or equal to 20% of the total. And double was at least 10%. So x2 is greater than or equal to 10% of the total. OK, cool. So we've got through bullet 3. OK, looking at bullet 4, uh, tax levy per unit. So that goes into our objective function. So we have that. Uh, now construction costs. So our cost to make each type of unit is as follows. And then, so where this is going to come in is we need to calculate the total capital needed. So how much money is needed to build these houses. And then we calculate how much money is needed to build our houses. We also need to account for how much money is needed to demolish um, you know, our houses to free up space. And then that total dollar amount that we need to execute this project, we're going to need to make sure that that's less than $15 million. Okay, so last is going to be our, uh, I don't know, construction constraint, you might call it, or construction costs. Okay, so constraint six would be, we're going to sum over all of our unit types times the dollar amount to make them. Um, so 50,000 
So we'll have 50,000 times x1 plus 70,000 x2 130,000 x3. I guess we could just divide it through by, say, a common 1,000 or that, because the right-hand side is going to be a huge number, too, but 160,000 x4, okay, plus, said it's going to cost $2,000 to demolish each house. to be 2,000 x5, and that needs to be less than or equal to the $15 million available. Okay, cool. All right, and then uh, very last, so constraint 7 would be our non-negativity constraint. So constraint 7 would just be non-negativity. So we can't have negative uh, units, negative houses demolished, or negative houses constructed. So non-negativity would just be that all of our variables need to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so I believe that should be it. So if we were to summarize, okay, so then in summary, So our goal is going to be to maximize z is equal to um, 1,000x1 plus 1,900x2 plus 2,700x3. thirty four hundred x four and that's going to be subject to the seven constraints listed above okay so I'll stop the recording um, I won't bother or bore you with me going back and forth and copying down the constraints but I'll, I'll write them and summarize them here um, and then uh, I'll show you that at the beginning of the next video where we go and we solve uh, in Excel okay so uh, hopefully that helps uh, so if I think about the keys to solving this problem uh, first we wrote down our variables, um, and then once we had our variables, in this case, the problem explicitly told us what our objective was, and then it was just a matter of going piece by piece through the problem and summarizing our constraints. Okay, so good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.